Coming up in this week in computer hardware, can you buy a 1080 GPU? Lenovo drops the first Project Tango phone along with Moto Mon, some promises Moto Z Force can't be broken. Oh, and is it safe to buy a new CPU yet? All that more coming up next on Twitch. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twitch. Bandwidth for Twitch is provided by Cashfly at C A C A G F L Y dot com. This is Twitch This Week in Computer Hardware, episode 367, recorded June 9th, 2016. Fab2 Pro and the Unbreakable Moto Z. This episode of This Week in Computer Hardware is brought to you by iFixit. Introducing the all-new ProTech Toolkit to give you the compact and complete toolkit for all things DIY. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TWITCH at checkout. Welcome to Twitch This Week in Computer Hardware. Twitch Weekly Show that aims to bring you the most useful, most informative, most engaging, and yes, most on-location <laughs> coverage. <laughs> uh, Did, yeah, you could say that. Well, it's sure. kind of strange. I'm Patrick Gordon. I'm Ryan Shrout. And we're not normally in the same room. This is true. We're both in San Francisco. So neither one of us are home at the moment. Uh, it became a very complex thing as of yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be at this Lenovo thing. Are you going to be there? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm already here. I didn't bring any of the electronics I was supposed to bring. For the, I didn't bring headset. I didn't bring microphone. I didn't bring cameras. I didn't do any of that. So I was like, hey, could you figure all this out for me, Patrick? Oh, sure. So we did, including some... Uh, Really awesome software that virtualizes a stereo mm -hmm. output from a Scarlett uh, 2i2 we called can mix Voice it down. Meter. And there you go. It turns out that Skype will only accept a single channel. It's Skype, the it's left channel. My microphones are generally mono, I guess. Why? I don't know. There's so many more things they can be. Yeah. In any case, uh, so Lenovo, you might know them as also owning the sort of Motorola Moto brand of phones. And we had two, two, two phone announcements today. Um, Probably the big one, the Fab 2 Pro, uh, the world's first Tango-enabled phone mm -hmm. uh, from Lenovo. Big. 6.4-inch screen. Yeah. Uh, 2560 by 1440 resolution. Uh, it is enormous. You have an iPhone 6S. I do. Not the Plus. Right. But the iPhone 6S, and it's... Dwarfed. Yeah. It, it's almost comical. Yes. Um, it, I don't... Have there been other... There have been other... Screens of this really size, big probably, phones, right? But, yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a good looking phone. It's a powerful phone. It's uh, man, we're looking at like a Snapdragon 820, yep. a ton of sensor we've, sensors we've never really seen before. Uh, so it will support Tango, and the whole point of that um, is to support Google's Tango or Project Tango, which is now just Tango, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Uh, basically a whole bunch of additional motion tracking and sensing that allows them to use it as a augmented reality window. It has it has a depth sensor. It's got four cameras on. It's got a front-facing and rear-facing, your standard. Then it's got a depth sensing camera. And uh, now I can't remember what the fourth one actually was, but it's got four different cameras that all combine into the ability to do. I, what I found interesting was Intel was here. They were on right. stage. This is not an Intel-powered phone. It's a Qualcomm-powered right. phone. Uh, but Intel had RealSense. Remember, we looked at the, there was a Dell tablet um, that had RealSense and it yes. had the ability to kind of do depth measurements and stuff. But it was just using stereo cameras and then a whole bunch of math. This doesn't really have any specific stereo camera in it. It uses single cameras that are doing different, different things. Yeah. Um, well, it was funny because they're like, okay, it's $499 mm -hmm. um, unlocked. It's going to be available September 16th. Uh, Best Buy, you know, major partner. And, yep. oh, by the way, it's going to be at Lowe's in time for the holiday yeah. shopping season. I, I'll admit, when, we, when I first got the information, it only listed Lowe's. It oh, did not funny. list Best Buy yet. And I thought, well, that this would be the – I think this is the first time a Lenovo phone is being sold in the U.S., mm -hmm. right? Um, and – like Lowe's was very confusing to me, but when they when they all the demos they showed, so they're showing a bunch of augmented reality demos. One where <laughs> there's a dinosaur, that, right? Like a dinosaur app that you can basically bring up dinosaurs from Velociraptors mm -hmm. to Transformers Rex, whatever it is, and it'll be in your physical space. You can right. walk around it and interact with it in some ways. Well, scale while it up, you're scale looking at there you go. Yeah, while you're, you're looking, at, you're your looking at it through the phone, yes. I played that game. It's really awesome. Is it really? I really enjoyed it. Like the aliens invading your room. The aliens invading your room. Um, but the other thing they do is like, hey, what will this, you know, chair from this catalog look like in this space? Right. Um, and that was, uh, 
you know, that's that's kind of something that we've seen people playing with on apps mm -hmm. on, on mobile devices for a while. One of my favorite ones, you would take a magazine, you would throw it onto the floor, a standard size magazine, you would throw it on the floor, you would take a picture with that, and then take more pictures around the room, and it would extrapolate the dimensions of the room uh, from the known okay. size of the magazine. Gotcha. So, you know, this is, Project Tango is, is essentially, gosh, it, if there was a thing that's like $3,500 from Microsoft, this developer kit. Um, um, HoloLens. That's the one. Yeah. So yeah. it's like HoloLens without a lens inside your phone. Uh, and it's it's kind of true to the whole sort of uh, right. Google Android experience, where if we can do it on a phone and make it more affordable for people, we're going to do that. And, and it's cool. $4.99. Um, I, I did a demo of this at Mobile World mm -hmm. Congress where uh, Lenovo gave us the Tango Project Tango tablets where you walked around a museum right and it did a kind of a structured tour through it and the same idea was going to be applied here right uh and it's 49 it's available in september i think it's 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 really interesting to look at it from a, the, a viewpoint of there hasn't been a whole lot of innovation in phones this is a very large phone so it's like you know you've got a specific audience that you have to you know target with that well phablets are you know it's it's for people who've been carrying a you know six inch phone it's not yeah. going to be that much bigger it's it 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 is bordering on tablet level but it's also <laughs> you know it's a tremendous amount of technology and it's also lenovo partnering uh partnering with uh lenovo partnering with with google, google to kind of lead right. the edge on on a pretty big it's project. impressive it's a it's, yeah. it's a neat device but that wasn't the only phone they announced um <laughs> well it's it, funny yeah like the fab 2 phone yeah which is you know because oh, this is uh, we yeah fab 2 pro yeah then and then they the also fab have two. a fab 2 but the fab 2 price is at like 199 dollars it's not project tango so it doesn't have all the sophisticated sensors right. but the cost is or the additional cameras so the cost is a lot lower but right um as exciting as I excited as I get it at about one hundred ninety nine dollars phones, the big uh, the big announcement, uh, which was accompanied by Ashton Kutcher, because you know <laughs> Brian and I are always hanging with those hip Hollywood types. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I actually brought him. Well, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I invited him out. I was wondering where. And you then were. they integrated him into the show. It was really embarrassing. I've never seen your entourage me. before. Something. Well, it's funny. They brought out like you know, they had images of 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 like you know fifteen years of Motorola phones, and then they were like you know remember snapping phones shut, and they brought out uh, what eventually evolved into the Moto Z uh, and the Moto Z Force. Force right. Five point two millimeters thin, a little hump for the camera on those uh, quotes, and for the Moto Z Force, which is their sort of Patrick proof version of the phone. <laughs> Quote, added our amazing shadow shield technology. We guarantee the display will not crack or shatter. Uh, it's a 5.5 inch quad HD display, a Snapdragon 820 processor, four gigabytes of RAM. Yes. Uh, 30 hours of battery. Uh, they're claiming the turbo charging will give you 15 hours of, of phone life from 15 minutes of charging. Uh, some, you know, pretty serious uh, laser focusing and optical image stabilization. Right off of the uh, camera. So uh, what looks to be a pretty badass camera inside of that one. Yep. I, I, I think that's, and, and th did we talk about the, the mods part of it? That's like really oh, yes. the interesting part. Like <laughs> other than the fact that Patrick won't be able to break it in theory. In theory. Is on the back of it, uh, there are 16 pens and it's mm -hmm. basically like a connection interface for power and data and uh, audio and video right. as it turns out. And much like, if you remember the LG G5, it had like they they had well, a modular like, phone like, that had to slit out the bottom, right? Yeah, the, the you get a pry out, bar. You, you would you would take apart half the phone. Yeah. this is you don't have to power the phone on or off when yeah. you're removing or adding accessories. It's just magnets snap it into the back mm -hmm. of the phone, and then it adds on accessories. And the three that they've announced are uh, a projector mm -hmm. that they claim can do a 70 inch screen, but That's I really wouldn't aggressive. know the lumen I'd output. I'd say 40 inches in a dark room. Yeah, uh, uh, they have a JBL speaker set, which mm -hmm. essentially would Turn your like a, a jam box. Bluetooth speaker. So it's got to be less than a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they demoed it on stage, but again, it's a huge room, so it's right. hard to really tell what that. Well, if that was actually, like. if what we heard up in the up in the nosebleed seats yeah. was coming from the JBL, you they, know, they did Moto put a mod. In front oh, okay. Of it. So I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to figure out what was going on down there. I was like, that's incredibly loud. And then uh, the third one was a battery that yes. they claim will give you twenty-two additional hours of battery life. Nothing wrong with that. No, no, that's. That's what I live for, right, is, <laughs> is, is battery life on laptops and phones and tablets and whatever the hell else there is. Um, so uh, the and idea... also fashion backs. Yes, of course, yes, fashion backs as well, so you can get your leopard print or whatever it is you need on the back. Um, Actually, they were, they were all very subtle and, and understated. Were they? Yeah. Hmm. Leopard print stuff will come later. <laughs> uh, so that's the Moto 
Uh, Z. The Moto Z and, and the Moto Z Force. Force. Yeah, yeah. Both of those have the snap-on backs. And the yep. Moto Z Force, which you picture, uh, should be what you're looking at right now. In theory, they're they're claiming you can't break the screen. I'm sure. I, yeah, you're right. Those those are pretty understated designs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You know. I approve of those. Especially, but yeah, there's, you know, there, there you see the projector on the left and the speaker on the right. They, obviously, they're going to add some thickness to the phone. Right. Um, but they but you can functionality. them if you want your phone yeah. thin again. Yeah, and, and apparently you don't have to reboot the, you know, hopefully no software crashes. If you're listening yeah. to Spotify, you suddenly rip out the, the, <laughs> the speaker Eat that. portion of it or something. But um, They tease some kind of laptop, uh, like a... Or like laptop keyboard, or maybe it was a tablet keyboard. Uh, it was it was a device on the back of it that introduced. I think it was it was going to be like wireless, like Wi Dye, no, yeah. uh, like wireless Wi Gig or something like that. that oh, you put on, you place on a dock for like four seconds at the beginning. I was thinking of that that shot that looked like some sort of a oh, glowing oh, oh, oh. keyboard. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't know what that was. Oh no, and then they had like. The projected keyboard right. was was an option as well. That's like well, the, the other thing is, these yeah, were, they did show the concepts. phone like docked in. So the idea that you could snap the phone. Well, mm -hmm. that's what they announced is a a one million dollar contest for developers for Moto Mods. They want people to come up with the cool ideas and like the idea of the the Moto Mod desktop uh, is is curious. I don't I don't. So. If they're not built by Motorola, I don't know how much I'm going to care. Not that I if they're awesome, I'll care. Right. But like if you look back at uh, what, the history of Stuff like the this. Intel Nook, right? Yeah. They were supposed they had this thing. Oh, you can take the lid off and you can make your own. And it can do all these cool things, and nothing ever happened with right. that. And the LG G5, they announced with, I think they announced three, right. like a camera and a, and a projector and something else. And, and they finally kind of like, yeah. started shipping. I'll, I'll be curious. You know, at least at least what they're trying to do is open it up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I like no, the I like idea, the idea of, of, of the, at sure. least you know making the spec available so that people can try to make add-ons. Because this, this is one of the first add-ons on a camera that did make me feel like it was half a Rector set and half <laughs> right. Like, Right. You know. What else did they show? They showed uh, like a very early prototype of a phone that wrapped around your wrist. Right. Um, when you have flexible, flexible screens, screens, they showed a tablet that you could fold in half and it became a phone. Well, it was like a snap bracelet. Yeah. There was um, one that was like a snap bracelet. It was big. It was bigger. But, yeah. And then they showed a tablet that folded in half to use as a phone right. and you can unfold it. These are all, these are not products yet, but, but instead are things that will. But Lenovo's you know, trying screen. to say that we're looking at the bleeding edge. We're looking to be yeah. hip. We really want to push the form factor. And it was and, neat. I, yeah. you know, well, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. I didn't, and <laughs> I'm going to call them out for this. So there's two levels at the Masonic right. center. They have this base level, like the ground floor, and they have this whole section of the right. upstairs. Right. And they said, uh, you know, why, why the, the CEO of Lenovo is on there. He's like, and I've got great news. Do you love these products? I've got awesome news. Everybody on the lower level, you get to pick if you our want the Moto friends. Z or our special, yeah, our special friends. friends. The, the you get to choose level. if you want a Moto Z or a Fab 2. Yeah. And he mentioned nothing about all of the people in the top section of the theater, which is where we were at. Apparently um, we're not special friends. Uh, now, I still think if I ask, I'll get a Fab 2 for a review or whatever. And that's fine. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was like... Why would you? Why would you call it out like that? Like this group, you because get they want the special friends. The rest of you special. guys, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for traveling out it's here. It's an election year. Somebody's insulting that. somebody. It was somewhere it was good. every was moment good. of the day. So you are just back. Yes, from your triumphant two-week tour of Asia, like which actually days, was like, close. yeah, it's yeah. you know. But you you were I I you corrected me that you weren't at Computex, but you were seeing a lot of vendors near Computex. I was. I didn't go to Taiwan. Okay. I didn't go to Computex. I stayed in Macau when I went to Hong Kong for a day too. While I was out there, uh, and all I did was really the same thing I would have done at home, except in a different time zone. <laughs> I sat in front of my laptop and watched press releases and news come out from other places. And you know, we we sent requests to like MSI right. and ASUS and I said, "Hey, send me pictures of your stuff so that we can write up a story and do so." All you that, flew so. three thousand miles to do this. Why? Well, I had to go see. Uh, AMD at Macau. Thank you. Right, they had they had a thing where they announced the RX 480 right. uh, uh, Polaris graphics card and all that. And then I was like, well, if I'm already over here. I'm going to stay. And so, well, you could fly to Taipei. And I was like, and then I got to make meetings, and I don't want to do all that. So do we talk to a, a, a bunch about the RX 480 last week? You know, do we have a firm ship date for that? June 29th. June 29th. Yeah, just in time for my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and 199 dollars just in. Time for your birthday. So it's like like in my price range. <laughs> yeah. So how's it? So it's in theory it should spank the nine fifty. Yeah, it definitely it definitely will do that. Will it spank the nine seventy? Um, my assumption is that it will be faster than the nine seventy for a hundred. Your definition of spank will will vary okay. from person to person. Well, if I think it, it, will, it will be somewhere between a nine seventy and nine eighty, and that's right. based purely on 
you know, the, the, the performance results, right. the performance numbers they gave, which were only in teraflops, and then my mm -hmm. knowledge of right. how that translates to actual in-game performance through GCN. Which is not a, you don't directly compare teraflops between NVIDIA and you AMD. Cannot. You cannot. AMD is going to be sort of, you know, a percentage of the teraflops. Correct. Right. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's just a, a matter of how much can... You can have this huge teraflop computing right. thing, but you got to translate that into actual gaming performance at some right. point. So, uh, it, I think it'll be between a 970, 980. The 970 currently today sells for about 329. Mm. Although I think you're going to start to see that drop right. pretty pretty quickly. Um, so I don't know if Nvidia's response will be to just drop 980, 970 prices accordingly, or if they'll have the GTX 1060 ready in time to compete. Well, at this point, so we should probably mention. You know, you may want to check Amazon really quickly, but you know, as of this morning, outside of a brief spate up at like Newegg, Canada, we yeah. haven't seen uh, uh, Nvidia GTX 1080 or 1070s pretty much for sale anywhere. They show up and they're gone in five minutes. They yeah. show up and they're gone in five minutes. That's pretty much how it goes. Which now. is incredibly frustrating. Yeah. If you've been thinking about buying a uh, GTX 980, don't just wait until you can find a 1070 or a 1080. Depending yeah, on what yeah, your, for sure. Your, you know what your pricing level is, especially if you're looking at VR. Um, oh, there's a GTX 1080 and showing up for $619.99, which is... Uh, Only one and, left in stock. Wow, not bad. $619.99 for a Founders Edition. Wait, for a Founders Edition? No, it's $819, sorry. Oh. that's Don't buy that one. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, $120 over the price it should right. be. And the so. reason it's getting two out of a possible five stars is a bunch of people price. being pissed off about price yeah. gouging. Um, so as we've gotten used to it. Oh, by the way, years. the 1070 should be on sale starting tomorrow. Okay. Or today, if you're watching the recording of this. So for several minutes, it should be available before it sells out again. <laughs> I'll be very curious to see how that compares to the, to the 1080 for sure. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, we talked about uh, Intel's 10 core CPU last week, $1,700. Yep. yep. Uh, awesome. If you're a professional or just have more money, not necessary for any form of, of gaming, even 4K, no. unless you like to do 4K gaming while rendering Blu-ray rips you know while compiling code while and, and intel invented a term for this it's called mega tasking mega tasking they had to invent a term because if they're going to charge you 700 dollars more than they should they right. need to have a good branding behind it uh, <laughs> it's it's a fantastic <laughs> processor it's yeah. it's the fastest consumer processor you can buy but they just had no justification for raising the price from you know the extreme edition has always been a thousand bucks let's see you make one what are you uh, going to charge for it uh you can I charge, charge way more than <laughs> charge way more than seventeen hundred. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, but I mean, goodness. this is what happens when you don't have any competition, right? So, well, but the other thing is, you know what? Look at how you know. Look at how the the prices. You know, the prices on the sixty seven hundred or sixty seven hundred K were not bad. Um, we're going to talk about this That's later true. in the show, but um, you know, if you are looking for a new CPU. Go ahead and start buying um, because we don't really expect to see anything new until January. Yep. Cabby Lake looks like it's going to be a January release as well. So go forth and build yeah. PCs. Oh, my goodness. Um, the, the, HTC Vive is shipping in volume. Yeah. Apparently if you if you if you want the HTC Vive, which kind of has the better head tracking and, of course, the superior controller situation, at least until... You know, we see what Oculus comes up with uh, yeah. when they finally ship their controllers. Um, HTC Vive is shipping in volume right now. Fortunately, you can't buy the 1070 or 1080 that would be ideal for feeding it graphics. Not yet. Not yet. Um, yeah, now available in 24 countries. It's a VentureBeat article on that one. The uh, uh, the other thing that was interesting is uh, I, uh, I've i gotten to play around with this one. You guys did a full review on the Corsair Lapdog, which is there. <laughs> it's, it's, if, you, if, you had, if you didn't see us talk about it at CES, it's basically like... You know, four feet of extruded aluminum right. with a soft pad on the bottom, and you mount a Corsair like a K70 keyboard in it, along with you know, it's got a trackpad and a mousing area, mm -hmm. uh, and then there it is, kids. Um, I like I like it right up to the point where every time I put it on my lap, I remember that if it's centered on my lap so it doesn't fall off my lap, the keyboard is to the left of of my spine. It's to the left of center, so I have mm -hmm. to. You know, I have to, like, sit staring at it, but my hands have to be over If you're trying here. to type, yes. If you're trying to write something, yes. But if you're trying to game, your body is usually centered somewhere in that 10-key position, right? Apparently you've got a, a game was <laughs> and mouse. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, but Alan definitely found that if you're going to type on it, if you're going right. to write anything, if you're doing any kind of productivity, you just have to kind of shift things. And what he ended up doing was kind of lifting it up. The bottom of it is kind of like has a, 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 a form to it so mm -hmm. that... 
it's it kind of fits between your legs a little bit and, it, and it's a little bit less mobile. Um, if you kind of lift it up and move it to the side just a little bit so the keyboard is more centered on you, right. you can actually you can actually do some work on it. Uh, it's it's a neat little device. There's a lot of like the keyboard mounts in it, very flush, very uh, cleanly. Um, the, sur the mousing surface has edging around it, like little raised metal edging so that your mouse doesn't slide off. Right. Um, what it needs still is, is, so it's wired as well. Like right. point that out. Because of the 16-foot USB and power cord, so it goes to your home theater PC, you use it while you're sitting in front of your television. Um, what it does need is maybe a pouch or magnet or something to hold your mouse. Mm-hmm while uh, you're not you're using it. it. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't fall off the right? side. Right, so it's not just kind of things. dangling off the side of things. Um, and I, a lot of people obviously want some kind of wireless version of right. it. And I don't know, you know, if you're going to power RGB keyboards and stuff like that, you it's, run into an issue. Well, it's also, there's, there's always back and forth whether or not people want to game with wireless keyboards or not. What's the pricing on the laptop? Uh, 120 Okay. Laptop's 120. So it's, I mean, it's kind of expensive. Um, but once you've dropped like 170 on a keyboard and $70 on a mouse. Yes. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the, the way high end accessories work today, it's, it's not, um, not out of line. I could see, you know, if it were 99 bucks, I think it's a much easier sell. Anytime you get over the triple digit mark, right. uh, you, you start to, people just have to put different questions in it. I, I really like it. Um, if you're a person that is, gaming on your TV mm -hmm. and you're hunched over a coffee table or you have a piece of plywood sitting on your lap or whatever it is, right. uh, this is a pretty good alternative. There you have it. Yeah. We should take a moment to thank our friends over at iFixit.com. iFixit.com slash twit. Enter in the code TWICH. We want to thank them for the support of the show. I was just using... Actually, what have I used my... my uh, my ProTech toolkit for um, in the last week. I have not fixed a toilet with it, but I've done okay. that in the past. Okay. Uh, you haven't I broken any phones recently? I haven't broken any phones recently. Oh, they tighten up the screws on someone else's phone. Okay. Pentalobe yeah. drivers are in there. Yeah. Um, I also actually fixed uh, a knife, one of my pocket knives, uh, yeah. and a couple of children's toys. Yeah, I'm getting, yeah, I'm going to start You're gonna going to be there. that path soon. Yeah. yeah Crazy Blue is your friend. I fixed it. If you haven't been there, and I don't know why. iFixit.com. It's your complete DIY electronics repair solution. 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guys and a huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with lifetime warranty. You know what lifetime warranty means? It means they stand by their gear. iFixit has got your repair need covers, and their step-by-step -step repair guides are amazing. Today, though, you heard me mention it, the all-new ProTech Toolkit. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. It's a beautiful tool roll, just as rugged as portable as before, but easier to use because it's easier to get to the tools. Best part, the 64-bit driver kit. That replaces the former 54-bit driver kit. And if you can do math, which I can almost do, that means 10 more bits. But that's not even the cool part. It's a better case. It's easier to get into. It's a, got a magnetic lid on there. Um, and actually, the magnetic kit itself, the 64-bit kit itself, is held onto the roll using magnets, um, which means you can pull the, uh, the, the bit holder off of the tool roll and set all of your screws down on the magnet in the tool roll, which I've been doing a lot. Um, really nice swivel top precision driver, fantastic high quality bits are inside of there, a flex extension to get those, you know, terrible screws that are buried like behind a card on the motherboard or underneath yeah. the edge of the case. I hate those. That's the whole array of tools you're looking at there right now. It's pretty awesome. Um, ESD safe tweezers, a suction cup to help pull the displays off of phones without breaking them, a ton of plastic opening tools and picks, uh, a metal spudger, iFixit's rubber handled Jimmy pry tool, which is really nice. It's essentially an incredibly thin piece of stainless steel with a big plastic handle you can hold on to, and that's the 64-bit uh, driver kit in uh, monolithic mode right there. Look, kids, you got a place to put your screws. <laughs> it's good. It's a good video. It's and if you want to get... Yeah, see? That's what I've been doing right there on that magnetic roll. Uh, and they actually even have an ESD safety strap if you want to, you know, strap yourself in, attach that to your project and keep yourself from zapping it into submission. That's great if you're in the cold parts of the country and wearing leather shoes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Back by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Buy it because it's awesome or don't. You still get free access to all the free repair resources on iFixit.com. But if you buy it, you not only get a great set of useful tools, you help support iFixit so they can keep adding. Soon it's going to be 20,000. Then who knows how many tens of thousands of free step-by-step -step repair guides. They keep adding to them. They're pretty awesome. 
Do yourself a favor, grab an all-new ProTech toolkit and get going on your next fix, hack, or build. Just head over to ifixit.com slash twit and use the code T-W-I-C-H. That's ifixit.com slash twit and use the code twitch at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. We want to thank iFixit for their support of This Week in Computer Hardware. We definitely do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. What else happened in the world of hardware this week? Uh, we talked about processors right. kind of coming out in the January timeline. Well, actually, so I was really curious. Uh, um, you guys were talking about uh, GTX 1080 mm -hmm. and 1070, three-way, four-way SLI, definitely not going to be enabled for games. <laughs> Does this matter to, to anybody outside of an incredibly small group of people who actually have twenty four hundred dollars for to to for gpus it, i mean it shouldn't right, right. so w when they when they announced when nvidia announced the gtx 1080 they said okay we're only going to really push and support two-way sli if you want to do three or four way we're going to allow you to do it but you have to go through this process to enable it right it's not just download the driver and install. It's called an enthusiast key it was really dumb to be right. honest with you it was their way of kind of don't, don't hold back ryan it was it was their <laughs> way of kind of like <laughs> making you have to go through an extra step to do it so right. maybe you wouldn't actually do it um but also not just cutting it off uh, so I actually had 1480s in. I was trying to go in and do this whole, let's, all right, let's figure this out. And I started emailing them. Okay, where's the key? How do I get this key? I want to do this stuff. And they said, give us a day. There might be some changes. And the changes are there's no more enthusiast key. It's great. You just That's download good. a driver, and it's going to operate. Now, the problem is, is they're only going to allow three- and four-way GTX 10 series, 1080 and 1070, to work on very specific applications, 3 d Mark. Unige in Heaven, Catzilla, and whatever other kind of benchmark overclocking tools mm -hmm. that people have. Um, so even if you had a case where, oh, three- and four-way SLI just happened to work in a DX11 game already, right. uh, that won't work with the GTX 1080 or 1070 anymore. Um, so they're essentially we're going back a little bit and saying, right. before we said we were going to allow three- and four-way, now we're not going to allow three- and four-way. Um, so there's that. Like, and that's, but it's a very small group of people right. that it affects, honestly. Um, but, you know, I, I, I saw some comments from people that actually kind of made sense. Like, also think of, like, the motherboards that are built to support four-way SLI, specifically the cases, the power supplies, 1,500-watt power supplies, like right. that type of thing, are built because of the idea of four-way SLI. And the idea that very thing. few people actually yeah. use in the real yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it will have some kind of waterfall, I think, mm -hmm. On things um, I also the more I, I sit on the idea of we're gonna enable four-way three-way and four-way SLI mm -hmm. for benchmarks for like 3d mark right. because we don't want our GeForce brand to come off of the leaderboards right mm -hmm. you know um, right feels a little crappy to me like right. it's because why, why do we run benchmarks? Why do benchmarks exist? Because we're trying to look for meaningful ways to evaluate products in the pursuit of a superior gaming experience. And, and you would want the benchmarks to at least in some way approximate what a user would get. Wow, if I buy else. these four cards and tie them together, I'll get the fastest performance available on the planet in my multiple 4K right. monitor array. Wait right. a minute, I just spent $3,000 on hardware and motherboards and power supplies, and I can't actually use it with a real video game. Exactly. Gadzooks. So the idea that we're going to enable it for this subset at right. first sounded, okay, fine, I make sense. It still makes sense from a business standpoint. But in terms of, uh, like, right. teaching the community about something and kind of saying, hey, really only two-way, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's really it's, irritating. It seems, it seems dumb. Um, the I, will, I should point out that if, if a game developer mm -hmm. uses DX12 and they use an M an MDA-based method for it, which is they, they're accessing the GPUs right. directly and not depending on NVIDIA to balance stuff, you can still have 1480s in your system. Well, I'm you sure there's a lot, of, in your system. a lot of developers are going to be spending the time to get that right. <laughs> Probably not, right? That's the issue, right? So uh, I, I think it makes sense. Like, I would never encourage anybody to get more than two GPUs. And right. most of the time, I don't even encourage people to get two GPUs. It's just it's too Especially many questions. Especially if you want VR. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, and actually, I'd say especially for VR at this point, but um, probably so, so that's kind of our current status of GTX 1080, 1070. I thought this was sure. fascinating. Um, There's a new uh, motherboard by Colorful, which includes a GTX 1070 graphics on the motherboard. Is this actually going to ship, or is this one of those things we see a picture of that that never actually shows up in the real world? Because look at that, you know. Yeah. Look at that at home. 
we got some rocking uh, SO dim slots there right below the uh, mm -hmm. CPU slot on the right and on the left. That looks like a full-blown GTX uh, 1070 kind of layout. I think this is something you'll never see. I'm fascinated. It's so uh, if I, I, uh, somebody reminded me many years ago at Computex, AMD mm -hmm. or Asus showed a motherboard that had a high-end discrete GPU on the board itself. Right. Um, and that never came out. This looks like, if you look at the picture of the board, it actually looks like it's just going to be in an all-in-one system, mm -hmm. right? And so it makes perfect sense for that. If you're, if you're trying to make a board to sell to MSI to build their next all-in-one gaming rig, suddenly it makes a lot more sense. You've got a socketed processor. You can offer some upgrade capabilities. You've got this integrated GPU in there that's very high performance. It would make more sense if it were on an MXM module, obviously right uh, so you have some more upgradability there but this is this is clearly made for very specific use cases for very specific um, usage models I, this is not something I don't think you should expect to find on Newegg or Amazon or, or something <laughs> like that right so I like the idea though I, no I mean, if you're I, building I kind some sort of, of crazy do, but like, isn't the whole point of graphics cards that you have some upgrade path? Ah, uh, it's right? totally and, overrated. And you don't have that on this, so that's ah, just totally overrated. Man. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh my goodness! If you've been watching the whole uh, uh, autonomous self-driving vehicle kind of fura as it rolls out, uh, uh, you know, Larry Page has kind of one upped that. Oh. Uh, he has invested, apparently, sources say Larry Page has invested over $100 million in flying car startup Z Aero and is also backing competing firm Kitty Hawk. That's a good name. I like that one. Uh, and I love this article on Bloomberg. Welcome to Larry Page's secret flying car factories. <laughs> um, there are a staggering, as, as having some friends that are aviators and having dealt with some people that were working in terms of next generation yeah. uh, air traffic control, um, in order to enable lots of smaller planes flying direct rather than giant planes flying, you know what I mean, kind of the future of aviation. Right. I can see a whole lot of issues with flying cars. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, people here in, in the Bay Area, uh, I don't know about Kentucky, uh, <laughs> have difficulty with turn signals and merging. Um, oh, no, that's, that, yeah. You know, and, and when you blow a turn signal and emerge simultaneously in the sky, you usually fall out of the sky. So maybe autonomous uh, controls will be necessary. Don't we still think that autonomous driving should be figured out first before we, like, let's figure well, out autonomy out. It just hasn't been in two dimensions, <laughs> and then we'll figure it out in three dimensions, <laughs> right? Doesn't that seem, that would make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, I still believe, I guess... Yeah. There's still the idea of speed, but if you get autonomous driving done really well, yeah. Do you need to autonomously fly? I guess it's just I get you can't get across the ocean. Well, would you rather take you know Would you rather you know fly directly or take the long circuitous interstate route yeah. from say San Francisco to Las Vegas? Yeah, I, I always in my mind I picture autonomous cars driving 400, 300 miles an hour. Sure, right. Except they're not going to drive that fast. I want them to. Well, we all want them to. If we just get let's let's skip this. Let's do the hype. What's the tube thing? The hypertube. <laughs> the hypertubes. Yeah, hyperloop. 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 Just get that between every major location and then autonomous cars from there. We should just skip investing in that and go straight to the transporter. I mean, uh, yes, teleporting is where we should be. <laughs> um, and I would like, if somebody said you could pay $2,000 to fly to Asia or you could pay $3,000 to teleport to Asia, yeah. you teleport. As long as I'm not going to be half fly at the end of it, and, you know. Or your head's on backwards yeah, or something that like stuff. that from Spaceballs. Yeah, that's well, true. It's <laughs> I've heard of Spaceballs reference in forever. <laughs> I just brought that up because I, was, I thought it was fascinating. And also the fact that Larry Page basically funded um, Z Aero from the ground up hmm. uh, and wanted his involvement kept secret. So well, pretty too fascinating. Bad for that. There's also a $1,000 self-driving car kit. Uh, the Verge has a good review of that where they went out and drove it. It's not quite ready for prime time as one would expect from a $1,000 retrofitting <laughs> your car with autonomy. But... It also suggests that the ability to create autonomous vehicles is a lot closer than I think a lot of people realize. But, huh. uh, yeah, on the road with George Hotz's $1,000 self-driving car kit. It's pretty crazy. Um, there are some things it doesn't do very well. I suggest you go read the Verge article to learn more about that. Um, yeah, Nest is not for sale, by the way. Nest, I think, is in trouble. They just... Uh, they just swapped out for a new CEO. Right. And I'm only bringing this up because I've, I was, it was interesting because a, a friend of mine asked uh, in, a, in an email thread with a group of us 
man, should I, you know, the, the guy that's doing the AV installation for the house they're building is really hitting them up on Control 4. And if you've never heard of Control 4, it's essentially uh, a very high-end uh, professionally installed system that kind of started out with uh, AV controls, but now is hooked into the, sort of all the Internet of Things in your house. Mm. And it's been interesting that, so Nest, which was, you know, kind of completely, it's depending on which version of the article you read, it's like Nest was either not a part of Google Home, flanked by Google Home, or is not competing with Google Home, or they're all really happy with each other, and, and Nest is just kind of doing its own thing over here. Um, hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the big rumor there that was heading out was like the CEO has changed and Nest might be up for sale. And now that the, they've equivocally stated that Nest is not up for sale. Um, but I think it's, it's frustrating for anybody, myself included, uh, who is investing in any kind of internet of things is, is the support and sort of longevity of any of these products mm -hmm. or, you know, how well the products continue to be supported after they ship or whether or not the ecosystem is actually going to develop, um, which brings us back to sort of, you know, cell phone yeah. accessories and other things. Um, it's almost unthinkable to me that Nest would not have become that. Yeah. As ubiquitous as they were, like the first right. big brand and the one that people bought, and at least from my point of view, people like they were not the first. They were the first big brand, but Ecobee was out before them, and I think had a superior product at the time. Not as stylish, but Ecobee's caught up, and I think is passing them in, in feature yeah. steps for thermometers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and, um, and and it's like I had hopes that when they were bought, mm -hmm. that there'd be oh, this is perfect. This is when Google wants to bring out all these different right. devices, and they didn't. Um, I have the Nest thermostat and I have the um, smoke alarm. Really? CO2. I was, after my experience with the Nest thermostat, there was no way I was using their smoke alarms. Uh, I will say that <laughs> so far, the Nest smoke alarms definitely err on the side of false positives. Because I've been notified is, that my uh, con my office is burning down several times when, in fact, I go check the camera, also Nest device, and I look at it, and everything looks nice and fine. And I stare at it looking for smoke in one of the corners of the room. And well, the, the drop cam, the, the, if, you've, if you've not read the, the sort of articles by the, the former drop cam founder uh, discussing uh, his relationship with Nest after being purchased, yep. that's a fascinating read. But, but, you know, my theory was is if, if, if the Nest thermometer technology is going to turn off the heat in my house because nobody's home despite the fact that my wife and two highly mobile children are in the room with the thermometer i had some concerns about its ability to detect um smoke that's fair <laughs> yeah and, it, it, and there's a slight it's, level of importance yeah on fire smoke detection so, and co2 detection you know co detection it's interesting you know the, the thing about spending the money for control four and it it adds up really quickly because it's semi proprietary hardware there yeah. is no user installable features on there it all has to be done by a professional the upside is that control four you know has revenue and as far as we know will continue to be around for quite some time yeah um, yeah. And, the, you know, and so if you roll your own or invest in a Kickstarter or anything else, you know, you're you're rolling the dice to see whether or not it is uh, it a ever does what it promises to do and B is supported. It's a very um, uh, I bet I've, I bet five times I've been approached right. about, hey, we want you to look at our automation technology. And it's like some company that has created a new brand, right. you know, uh, to, to kind of go out and do their own thing to try to, to capture some of that market. So this is how we're really going to take over the deal. market. Yeah. You know, it's always yeah. there. This is how we're going to take over the market. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, Android Marshmallow yeah. adoption has passed 10% after eight months. That's better than we have seen in the past. I, you know, at this point, I'm just pointing it out that as much as I, for example, uh, you know, the Moto G, fantastic phone, uh, but it's frustrating. We, you know, we, we were heard some rumors that, that, that uh, you know, Google slash Android is starting to push harder to force, um, to force uh, carriers to either, you know, unleash the updates or, or put some kind of cap on the amount of time they can spend on the updates or because they just have this huge install base of phones uh, that right. is not getting upgrades and probably never will get upgrades. And that's incredibly frustrating as a user. It's incredibly frustrating as a developer. Uh, and it's also incredibly frustrating in the security world because there are so many unpatched phones out there yeah. and so many uh, uh, interesting and exciting flaws showing up here and there. So, I mean, yeah, 10% is an improvement, but not, yeah. not good enough. It's a ten percent. Ten percent of of all Android install base is a lot of phones, 
but it's, it's true. It's still, you know, it's, it's not even like, you know, a career in baseball is three successes out of every 10 <laughs> tries. You know, we're not even up to a good, you know. That's that's right. We're batting 100. 100. But not 100%. Not 100%. No, no. Well, hopefully we're batting 100%. Uh, I want to thank Lenovo for letting us uh, use their bandwidth so we could record we'll this. Thank our caterers next door as well for the... That was some crazy the noise. The, the crashing bottles. There was before. a lot of crashing behind us. That's all right. And I didn't. Mics. I never pulled this fire alarm. Yeah, keep 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 away from that. <laughs> Sitting here in the shot the whole time. I just. Uh, you know what's worse than prison? Prison in San Francisco. You know why? You go to jail for that, really? Well, as far as, as I'm concerned, just like a fine or something. <laughs> is it okay in California? Is that the state where you can just pay the cops directly? I don't know. <laughs> That's so many bad places know. to go. With. Just don't touch the okay. fire alarm, right. okay? All right. Don't be that guy. Okay. Don't be that guy. Right. Oh, my goodness. PCPro.com is the place to find all of Mr. Ryan Shrout's epic and amazing benchmarking. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, the Intel 750 is now shipping uh, uh, an M.2 adapter with the uh, 750 series SSDs. Yeah, the, the Intel SSD 750 series, uh, it is. it comes in a PCI Express. Right version or a two and a half inch version that uses the U.2 connector. Well, the U.2 connector is on some motherboards. I've got a motherboard with a U.2 connector. You? Okay. I'm not the a, guy. Not <laughs> a lot of them. No. Uh, but a lot more have M.2, so they basically started shipping it with a, an M.2 to U.2 adapter. Can you run NVMe over both M.2 and U.2, or is it only U.2? No, no. It, yeah, M.2 yeah. It has a PCI Express interface. Yeah, yeah. So it performs and should act identical. Okay. Um, it's just basically getting people to a, a, new, a new form factor. They're not shipping yet, and a, it's an odd thing. Like, there's going to be a different SKU, and it's uh -huh. probably going to have two letters different in the part. Um, so you have to be careful, I guess, which one you look for. And it'll probably but. still be the wrong picture on Amazon.com. Uh, inevitably, <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, or they'll have pictures of both in that. each listing. Yeah. As always, you can find, uh, actually, uh, Alan Malvantano's writing on storage and benchmarking. is benchmark creating at PCPro.com. Mm -hmm. uh, more news to come. Hopefully, we'll be reviewing the phones both on TechThing and PCPer, the new Moto phones and the new Lenovo phones. And, uh, wow, a lot of hardware coming out in the next few weeks. No CPUs, but a lot of other hardware. Right. Yeah, I've got plenty to do. That's fine. I can hold <laughs> on to CPUs for a little bit. I have the pocket chip, the $9 PC. The pocket I'm excited. Chip. I saw that. And the HDMI adapter is here. Uh, all right. I hate composite video. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, you can get more of me at uh, techthing.com or avxl.com. That's the podcast I hope it's with Robert Heron where we geek out about home theater and our projector obsession, my projector obsession. You got a projector in your future right here? I, I, I would like to. I, I think that will be my next screen purchase. I really, I do. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm either going to put it in the house, put it in the new office. I new bought office? a church. You bought a church. I bought a church. <laughs> so... It may have a giant wall that needs a projector. I don't know. We'll see. I I sense awesomeness. Yeah. Giant screen gaming. <laughs> With that, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Twitch this week in Computer Hardware. You can find all of our episodes at twit.tv slash twitch and all the information you need to subscribe to the show. You can reach us at Ryan Shroud or at Patrick Norton on the Twitters. And, hey, thank you all for listening and watching. And uh, that's it for this episode. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Ryan Shroud. We'll see you next week on Twitch.